Hello guys, this is Sean S here, and I am here with another rant. Well, technically my first movie review. So today's movie review is going to be on an animated movie, which is titled Tom and Jerry, Willy Wonka, and the Chocolate Factory. And uh, as you can tell by the title and the thumbnail, yeah, you should know that this movie is awful. In fact, it's probably one of the worst animated movies I've ever seen in 2017. Why, you may ask? Well, let's begin. First off, I'm going to start off with the story. And to start off with it, I'm going to ask a simple question. Have any of you ever seen the original Willy Wonka film? If you said yes, then you also said yes to also seeing this movie. Here's my biggest problem with the story here. It's a shot-for-shot -shot rehash of the original Willy Wonka film. I know that is just one issue and that shouldn't affect the whole film, but here's the thing. This problem is continuously happening over and over again, making the entire plot predictable. But of course, they did try to throw in Tom and Jerry and the villain Slugworth, which he's completely pointless here. Trust me, I'll get more into that later. What they tried to do with Tom and Jerry and Slugworth in this movie was try to throw in them just to try to trick the audience into thinking that it's different, even though me and many other people are not fooled. We noticed nearly everything that they rehashed. And speaking of pointless scenes, there's one part in the movie that literally doesn't serve a purpose. There's one part in the film where Tom and Jerry are going to the candy shop and stealing Wonka's candy bars and giving them to Ch Charlie and his family and then returning them to the shop. It's one of many scenes in this movie that serve absolutely no purpose along with Slugworth's song about how he wants to steal Wonka's factory. Oh, and not only does Slugworth not serve a purpose, Tom, Jerry, and even Tuffy, which is a new character that they added in the franchise for some reason, they don't serve a purpose here either. All they're here to do is out with Slugworth, and that's it. You could have easily taken them out of the film and Nothing would change at all. Except for Slugworth, because I'm going to go more in depth with him in a little bit when I get to the characters. But honestly, he's the only character besides the main characters of the Willy Wonka film that actually serves a purpose here, only at the end, not during the rest of the movie. By the way, something I realized while watching this film is that it's trying to be a crossover in a way that is like the Hanna-Barbera and Surf's Up WWE crossovers. However, those were actually trying to be a WWE crossover and not someone else's story that just added recognizable characters in the background. This, on the other hand, is exactly what I'm talking about when I say that they just took someone else's story and added characters in the background. In fact, it's barely even a crossover at all. It feels like it was originally going to be an animated version of Willy Wonka, but at the last minute they were like, Hey guys, I have a new idea for this animated Willy Wonka movie. Let's turn it into a crossover with Tom and Jerry. After all, we did the same thing with Tom and Jerry and the Wizard of Oz and many others. Let's do the same thing with this. If that's the case, then Warner Brothers, I have a simple message for you. If you want to make an animated version of Willy Wonka, make a animated version of Willy Wonka. And if you want to do a crossover, then do a crossover. Don't just add in recognizable characters in the background and just rehash the story. And even if you're going to make an animated version of Willy Wonka, don't rehash the story. Because it will make the entire plot completely predictable. And also for the crossover part, 
why not just make new animation and new voices for the characters? Otherwise, it will just be a confused mess. And it will be completely predictable. I know I've gone on for way too long about the story here, so I'm going to move on because I already got an entire page talking about some aspects of the story. So I'm going to move on to the animation. Oh man, this is an interesting topic for me to talk about. Now before I get into what I think about the animation, I do have a few positives to point out. When it comes to the backgrounds in this film, they do look nice, giving a nice animated visual representation of the original live action film. And when it comes to the design of the characters, they do try to to give out a cartoony look in terms of the designs. And honestly, it doesn't look that bad. Well, sometimes. And last but not least, the best part of the animation along with the backgrounds is the effects of the film. Whether it would be with Violet turning purple or Mike TV being transported into being tiny, the effects actually look pretty good. And it isn't ruined by anything by any means, neither is the backgrounds. Well, I think that the designs of the characters are a little ruined thanks to the expressions that they make, but I'll get to that when I get to my problems. But the positives quite possibly end there. I'm going to get my first problem out of the way, and this might be a little nitpick to talk about, but when we get into the 40 minute mark, that one scene where Gus falls into the chocolate river had an animation goof that I noticed even without paying much attention to the animation. When he falls into the chocolate pool, which is clearly chocolate, you would think that the animators would animate him being covered in chocolate, right? No, when he comes out of the river, he looks like he wasn't even affected by it at all. I know people will probably consider this to being a nitpick, but however, when you take a look at the original Willy Wonka film, when Gus actually fell into the chocolate river, he actually looked like he fell into the chocolate river. Here though, he looks like he wasn't even affected by it, and it looks like more like he fell in water than a chocolate pool. And this mistake that they made with the animation isn't just a minor thing. Actually, no. It's huge. It's a huge animation mistake that they clearly made for an animated movie that even I noticed. The n next, there's the character animation. And there's also the designs of the characters. When it comes to the designs of the characters, I did say that they did look good, but when it comes to them wanting to do expressions, wow, it is laughable. I mean, I gotta say this right now. Hey internet, I have new meme faces for you. And finally, there's the character animation. Okay, I will say this. Tom and Jerry's character animation is pretty energetic and fine, but when it comes to them wanting to animate the humans, I see a big downgrade in that. When it comes to them wanting to animate the humans, a lot of their animation is very glitchy, choppy, stilted, and sometimes they even reuse a lot of animation, especially on Willy Wonka. When I was wanting to scan through the film to find that scene where Gus falls into the chocolate river, I, I noticed that Wonka's animation was reused quite a few times. And what I'm trying to say is, the animation where he was sipping out of a teacup, they reused animation from that until he bites out of the teacup. When it comes to the animation at first glance, it may not look too bad, 
but when you actually scan through the film, you'll see its true colors right there. And finally, there's the characters. Keep this in mind guys, because of the fact that the writing is awful, good luck finding any characters here that aren't bland or pointless. First, there's the two main characters of the film, and Tom and Jerry themselves. Like I said before, both of them are completely pointless here. All they are here to do is outwit the pointless villain Slugworth. Sure, the other Willy Wonka characters do name drop them, and Willy Wonka himself said that there was a cat in the factory, but however, if you took him away from all those other scenes, nothing would be affected at all. And this might be weird for me to point out, but I feel as if Warner Brothers are using them to make them the next scrap from Ice Age because of them interrupting a lot of the scenes with them doing shenanigans. And lastly, because Tom and Jerry take up more screen time than Charlie, it affects his actual character development because of him wanting to make his family happy by getting them food and actually wanting to move them into Willy Wonka's factory in the original film. Then there's Tuffy, and he's a very lackluster character. His only trait is that he dreams of becoming an Oompa Loompa. He serves no other purpose to the film other than to help Tom and Jerry on their journey to warn Willy Wonka about Slugworth, and that's pretty much it. So he's just as pointless here as Tom and Jerry. And then there's the villain of the film, Slugworth, in which he does not serve any purpose here. Why is he pointless in this film? Well, because in the ending of the film, he admits that he wasn't a villain throughout the entire film. Then what was the point of every other scene that tried to build up the fact that he was a villain, filler? I'm not joking when I say this, but that ending scene goes completely towards Ice Age Collision Course in terms of fooling the audience into thinking that that character is a villain, where you build up the entire film with these characters being a villain, and then you, at the end you say, hey, we're not a villain, so haha, <laughs> April Fools. However, unlike Tom, Jerry, and Tuffy in this movie, he actually does serve a purpose in this film. Well, only in two scenes, because in the original Willy Wonka film, he only appeared in two scenes. One was a dark alley scene, and one was in the ending to give us a twist ending that Slugworth was actually working for Willy Wonka and he wasn't actually convincing Charlie that he was a villain towards Willy Wonka. As for the rest of the characters from the original Willy Wonka film, they are predictable, just like with the story, and that goes for the songs as well. Before that part where Willy Wonka was like, Charlie, break the rules, you get nothing, you lose, good day, sir. Yeah, that is in this film. I knew it before I watched that scene in this movie. That's seriously how predictable this movie is, along with the songs that are being sung. Because all that material that was done in this film was already done in the original film. At best, all these characters can be described as bland and predictable, but at worst, all these characters can be described as pointless, not adding anything to the movie, or they can be there just to add filler and pad out the movie's runtime. Overall, Tom and Jerry Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is nothing more but than something that is meant to be a soulless and heartless cash grab off of Tom and Jerry and Willy Wonka's name with the lazy writing that is a shot-for-shot -shot rehash of the original film, animation that doesn't look that bad, but in execution you can see its actual colors, and characters that are either bland or pointless wastes of time. Honestly, so far, this is my least favorite animated movie of 2017, up to this point. 
any other movies that I've seen this year, I gave below average ratings to, like Surf's Up 2, Rock Dog, The Boss Baby, and Spark, were movies that I didn't like. However, those films' real downfall is that they were generic with the exception of Surf's Up 2. And with, at least with Surf's Up 2, as bad as it was with rehashing the first Surf's Up, at least it was different with how it executed the scenes, and you could actually call it a crossover. On this, on the other hand, its big downfall is not that it's generic, it's a rehash of a pre-existing property and it doesn't do anything different with the execution. Every single scene that I thought was going to happen in this movie did happen, and there was not a single scene that I didn't think was predictable. The entire thing was completely predictable, and I got everything that I expected from this film. When I first saw the trailer for this film, I expected it just to be a boring crossover with another story like the other Tom and Jerry movies, but however, it surpassed my low expectations. I don't know if there will be an animated movie worse than this, since we are only in July and there is only 8 animated movies left in the year. And the Emoji Movie, or should I say, possibly the Norm of the North of 2017, and the Nut Job 2 might actually have potential to be worse than this film, but just because two movies that are coming soon could possibly be worse than this, that doesn't mean that this movie is off the hook so easily. So I'm going to give Tom and Jerry Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, a 2 out of 10. I think it's awful. My best recommendation for this film is to just skip it entirely, and just stick with the original film, or I would also recommend the 2005 remake too. Sure, it isn't as legendary as the 1971 film, however, it actually did something new with the characters that the original movie didn't, like giving Willy Wonka a backstory, or actually doing something different with the effects that they used in Willy Wonka's factory. Although I will admit, those pop songs were very forgettable. Anyways, now that I'm done talking about Tom and Jerry, Willy Wonka, and the Chocolate Factory, let's take a look at how 2017 is going on by itself. Wow. Just when I thought that the year was starting to pick up with movies like Captain Underpants and Cars 3, and with Despicable Me 3 being an okay movie, after all those good movies slash okay movies, the year started to make a U-turn and take it its way back to the dark ages of the year, where we got a tidal wave of bad animated movies. Near the beginning of the year, sure, we did get good movies like the Lego Batman movie and okay movies like Smurfs the Lost Village, but you still had to go through surfing penguins that rehashed the story, dogs that played rock and roll in which even reading my notifications is more interesting than actually watching the movie, a baby in a suit that pretty much has the same effects as Rock Dog, and a movie that doesn't have any clue what it wants to do, so it basically rips off every other space movie and other animated movies from last year and even from this year. And guess what? We're not even out of that dark age yet, because we still have two bad animated movies before we possibly get to uh, the rest of the year that has nothing but good or okay movies. We're supposed to be getting the Emoji Movie in two days, and in August we're supposed to be getting the Nut Job 2. Oh, and by the way, to add on to that point about how 2017 w is going so far, I decided to add up all the ratings that I gave for every animated movie that I watched in 2017 so far, and take a look at this pie chart right now. This is how many animated movies I've given a score so far, and the bad outweighs the good by 
20 to 1. I hope that the rest of 2017's animated films picks up the pace because 2017 so far looks like it's going to be a disaster year for animated films. I hope that the rest of the animated movies this year, like Leap, the Lego Ninjago movie, The Star, Coco, and Ferdinand will somehow improve the year because at the end of 2017, in January, I actually want to do my own top six or five best and worst animated films of 2017 list because I actually have quite a lot to say about all these animated films. I'm sorry I didn't talk about the other animated films that I thought were bad this year because I didn't really have a lot to say about them. If I would have reviewed the Boss Baby, Rock Dog, and Spark separately, then I would have the exact same thing to say about them. Anyway, so this is Sean S, and I'm signing out, and it's been a pretty long while since I made an actual video.